So I'm um, still on the idea of structures and structure arrays. We've talked about thus far um, how to create structures by motivating this example uh, with basketball players cards. Um, and so what we've done is we've created a structure with two ways, uh, what I call the direct, uh, once again, the direct uh, data entry method, which was creating this variable called player and then dot the field, which was first name, which was Huey. And then we did player dot last name equals Freeman. Player dot uh, number equals 24. And player dot position equals string G. So that was the direct way. And then we came in here and used the other method, the group method, which was uh, player equals the keyword struct. And then we did these field name data pairs. So we said uh, field name equals first, data equals Huey. Field name equals last, data equals Freeman. And then what we found when we ran out of space, which you do a lot doing structures, uh, you put in these three dots, which are ellipse, and tells MATLAB to continue on the next line. So we do field name equals number. That was 24 for the data. And then field name equals uh, position. And that's character G for the data. And I'm done. So those are the two ways we've defined it. Um, and, and those are the two ways that are actually built in the MATLAB. So um, that's what's built in. However, there are times uh, you can make a lot of mistakes here if you had to do multiple data, which we'll do in a second when we create structure arrays. So it's, it's very useful sometimes to create a function that you would give a cell array of the values. Right. So if I had some function, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create that in MATLAB here in a second, so I'm going to have a function called make player. And make player is actually going to take in a cell array of these values. Right? And then it's going to assign those cell arrays uh, to a structure. So it's going to take in a cell array and give back a structure. Right? And the reason I do that um, is there's some practical reasons. A, it's faster if I had a whole lot of stuff to do than writing all this out. And also, um, what it allows me to do is make sure that I don't misspell these, um, these field names when I go through. Because if I misspell a field name, then I create a new field and it will make my data confusing. So creating a, a function uh, called make player that will do this will sort of alleviate some human error. So let's look at that here. Uh, I wrote the code here. Uh, and I actually wrote the function over here. So let me bring that up. So this is the function uh, make player. Uh, you can see it takes in info, which is a, is a cell array. Um, and all it does is take that information, which is a cell array, and it accesses each cell, the, the, the contents of each cell, and it puts that in the data portion of this structure statement here. So the field name will be first, the information will be the first thing that's in that cell array. The field name will be last, the information will be the second thing in that cell array. The field name will be number, the information will be the third thing that's in that cell array. The field name will be position, and the information will be the fourth thing in that cell array. And so then it will return this structure. So it takes in a cell array, returns a structure, and now I never have to worry about misspelling, so I know that every everything that I put in um, my structure array will, um, will have the same label names. And so when I go to access stuff, I don't have to worry about a misspelling that's corrupted my data in any way. So let's go back here to uh, intro. So I just put that code there so we can look at it here. And so now I say player equals make player. So the structure player is now going to equal the output of this make player. Now you don't have to do this, uh, this, this function thing. 
but it does make uh, it's a very good implementation of, of, of this. Uh, so when I do that, and I'm just going to run this um, so that you can see it here. Um, when I do this, it works just as before. It creates a player becomes a structure one by one. And so, therefore, uh, when you look at player, it has those fields, the same fields we had before. Um, and then the values, once again, of first is Huey, uh, the value of second, Freeman. The third thing, the value, uh, excuse me, first is, he is Huey, last is Freeman, uh, number is, is 24, and position is G. So this does the same thing as the other methods. It just uses a function to make things a little more standard. Okay? All right. Um, so next up, as I have written here, let me move down the code. Next up, I motivate by, by saying, well, you know, that's cool, but but what, what about the whole team like we did before? So we came up here, remember, um, and we actually put in the whole team as a cell array of cell arrays. Right? And then we started this whole thing by saying that that gets a little bit confusing when you're indexing stuff. So right now we've created a structure, so we've created one structure. Now what about creating these others and holding them all together, right? And so that's what we're going to do next. Now, one way to do this is there's sort of a second way to use our group entry. And the way it works is I still use struct and I still put in field name, but I can put in multiple values in each field name. And those multiple values will be in cell arrays. And so you see here, it's field name here, then cell array of all the field values. So if I wanted to come up here and put in this, the whole team, I could write team equals structure, which is just like before. Um, the field name, which is just like before, which is first. But instead of just one name, Huey, I give it a cell array of all the first names. Right? And then I use my ellipses over here, my dots, to take me to the next line. Keeping us, well, keep in mind, this is all inside of the parentheses of structure. The ellipses just take me down to the next line because I don't have enough room out here. Continue on. Um, next is the field name last, and then a cell array of all the values I want to put in last. Right? And you can see from the roster up here. Um, these are the names I want to put in there, in the right order that match um, that match the order of the first names I put in up here. Then I use the ellipses to go down here and um, do number. That's the field name, and then all the numbers in the right order. And then I go to the next line, and then I do field name position, and then all the positions in the right order. And then I close this with the parenthesis, and then I put a semicolon here. Uh, so. Um, in fact, let me not put a semicolon here. I want to see. I want you to see what MATLAB is going to do. So let's run this, and then uh, and, and check it out. Okay. So I'm going to run this. Step through. So you see, team becomes a one by five structure array with fields and it tells me the field names first last number and position okay so this is because they're multiple values it's no longer a structure it is a structure array because there's more than one just like when we put more than more than uh, we do a, we did a, a cell of cells now we're doing this has more than one structure in it so it's a structure array okay and if you look over here, instead of it saying one by one in the workspace, it now says a one by five. So team is a one by five of a class structure. Okay, so I step through again. I access, uh, so I access team on line 90. So I double that up. Uh, here, I access team of two. So the second structure in here, it actually gives me, it is a structure whose value in the first in field entitled first is Riley. Uh, the value in the field entitled last is Freeman. The number is 13. The position is G. So this is the second. Uh, if we go back up here, this is the second structure 
in the structure array and I access that by team um, two. Now if I want to get to Riley's first name I say team two dot first and you notice that is not a cell Riley that is the actual string Riley. So now if I just now it's sort of easy I don't have to remember that it's the the third index the, the, the last the first name is the first index and last name is the second index and then I have to do a whole bunch of um, things with my parentheses and my braces I just say give me the second player on the team and their first name on line 93 I say give me the second player on the team's last name which is Freeman and on line 94 give me the second player on the team's number which is 13 and then give me the second player on the numbers name the second player on the team's position and I get 90 I get uh, G so that is a lot quote unquote easier than trying to remember and I'll scroll back up here to, to remind than trying to remember all of this stuff here with uh, you know do I access the cell do I access the contents of the cell and what index um, is the information uh, where what index is the information that I want to get so that's the motivation of using these structures here and they come in quite handy when you're holding information that is of this nature um, so this is one way to do it. I could use the group entry field method. Uh, the other way to do it, which I assert down here, is, and this is why I went through the trouble of making the function, is you can use the function, and that makes this even a little bit cleaner. Um, so if I go down here and use my function, so what I do here is I say the first member of the team equals make player and then I give it the information so I use the same function that I used up here in this example here right now I'm going to do this on each player and so I say team one so I create this this array this vector of team numbers and team number one is equal to the, the structure that comes out of this function with this information so um, and then I say team number two is a structure that comes out of this function with this information and team Player number three is a structure that comes out of this function with this information and so on. And so I build it this way um, instead of the way I did up here, lines 86 through lines 89. And so just to show you that this does work, I step through here, and this will give me the same thing as before. Uh, it gives me team one is now team, if you go over here, team is a one by one with structures in it in the work in, over here in the workspace. Um, if I do it again, now I've added another structure, so team becomes a one by two. Next line, line 100 executes, now I've added another structure, so team is a one by three. One on one, I've added another structure, team is a one by four. And one on two, I've added another structure to the array team or the vector team, and it's a one by five. And so now when I look at that information, just as I did um, up above, team is a one by five structure array with fields, first, last, number, and position. And then if I access the second thing, I get the structure, uh, which contains this information. And if I want the actual information, I do that particular structure of the second player, dot, first name is Riley, second name, uh, last name is Freeman, number is 13 and position is G for guard. So two different ways but the um, once again the writing your function method um, prevents you it, it, it helps to eliminate some human error although this this way is, is perfectly feasible to use the, the group entry that's extended uh, here is perfectly a good way to do it however the function way is also um, it looks a little bit cleaner um, a way to do this. So next up we'll talk about um, library functions that you can use on structures.